Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, today, I would like to talk uh, a little bit about the value chain uh, along pharmaceutical and chemical uh, production. And uh, what I would like to talk about is how to transform from a company that is dealing a lot with laboratory instrumentation. Um, Oriva is very well known for spectrometers, Raman, fluorescence, but also for particle size uh, measurement analysis. And how to transform uh, from the viewpoint of delivering laboratory equipment towards the production chain. And um, so I don't know if uh, in the audience we have people that are, are considering to have their own company in the future, maybe. Uh, some of the questions that I raise here are questions that you also need to answer for yourself. Uh, in order to be successful in this in this field. And actually, I don't make a big difference between chemical and pharmaceutical production because um, more or less the, the processes are going to be uh, similar in the future. So if we, if we start about market trends, and there's, uh, I don't think, not much new. Everybody knows this. Um, climate neutral chemistry is a big topic uh, in, in Europe. Um, there are ways to do this um, in order to do uh, process simulation, to uh, actually optimize production processes on the PC uh, before the actual installation takes place. So um, this is an important topic. Uh, there's also uh, the idea of modularization. Uh, we have here smart factory to bring medicine to market faster. Time to market is an issue. And modularization uh, also, like Alvaro said, um, maybe in the future, everybody has his own drug. So of course, the production processes need to adapt to this situation uh, if we are doing small batch uh, production. And one of the big topics also, since I mentioned batch, is a batch to continuous production for scalability issues. So those are all the, the market trends that uh, we as a, as a supplier uh, of the industries uh, need to be aware of and uh, also discuss how we can support our customers and partners in the transformation to get uh, these things implemented. Coming from the market trends towards the technology trends, um, this is actually a little bit older from Aviva in 2019. So I think it's still pretty much up to date, uh, the three years of Corona crisis, uh, actually was a drawback uh, in, in the sense of uh, innovation. So I think most of the things are, are still uh, uh, valuable that we see here. So we have the, the market environment, uh, the industry trends. However, it's questionable if uh, digitalization is an industry trend because uh, in my point of view, nobody's performing digitalization uh, just to have it digitalized. There has to be uh, a certain reason for this. And one of the reasons for digitalization is, as a technology trend, the digital twin that you see here. And there's also a small uh, um, description. Uh, it's, a, it's a virtual model. And this is actually very vague. It could be a product, it could be a process or a service. And the idea is to use simulation uh, algorithms to predict how my process uh, my production process would work uh, in the future. And why are we doing this? Well, uh, as mentioned, we have to shift towards smaller batch production. Um, we have to support sustainable production, actually in the, in the sense of uh, resource uh, and energy efficiency. And um, we have to do digitalization and virtualization for the optimization of production processes. And of course, the product quality and accuracy uh, is key and also the reporting uh, of the quality, um, you know, the, the area of uh, audit trails is, uh, is a big topic as well. And uh, I over exaggerate a little bit. Uh, we do not only see these very nice um, installations, spotless, uh, brand new. No, as a supplier, we also see something probably not as bad as in this picture, but similar to this environment. And uh, if we talk about Raman spectrometers being placed in an environment like this, there are some uh, special topics to consider. So brownfield installations and brownfield digitalizations is going to be 
in my point of view, a big topic in Europe, uh, looking at the uh, the times needed to get permissions for uh, additional production uh, sites uh, in, in Europe um, is, a, is a hassle. It takes several years till uh, uh, it's, uh, it's possible to build a new production site. So I think uh, a lot of companies are um, extremely interested in uh, optimizing uh, existing installations. And uh, of course, uh, there's also some, some support required in that field. So what are the customer requirements? And uh, what you see here on the right is um, probably pretty much known to, to most of you. Um, it's the, the letter uh, from the plant instrumentation all the way all the way up to the enterprise level controls, um, you know, ending up with the enterprise resource planning uh, layer on top of, uh, of actually of the paramite. So in the plant instrumentation, we have valves, we have sensors, uh, we have robots, um, we have 3D printers. Yeah. So this is what we see in the in the uh, installation in the production area. So in the in the past, the sensors were actually implemented here, and everything else was left to um, other other suppliers, other vendors. And the question is now with the with the knowledge that a company has on the specific sensor type, on the limitations of the sensor, on the strengths of the sensor, whether it would make sense to extend the knowledge base to also enable applications to work on the plant level controls. And um, that's a discussion that uh, as a company uh, you should have, yeah? whether this is uh, something that uh, you want to provide to your potential customers. Actually, in my point of view, it's absolutely necessary uh, to move up uh, on the ladder here um, in order to support your customers in the future, um, especially when it comes to um, um, simulation of, um, of inline um, analytics uh, for process optimization. So where do we get help? Where do we get help for making all these decisions? And uh, one source of help is the user association uh, of um, the uh, automation uh, uh, users in the um, chemical and uh, pharmaceutical domain. And you can see here some of the, um, of the members of Namur and they have different work groups. And in one of the work groups, they have defined uh, what it's called the uh, Namur um, reference architecture of process orchestration. So this is how Namur and the work group members see production processes being um, uh, established in the future. Some of them are already. So we have a harmonized communication layer on the software side, and then we simply add elements in the process, almost like USB, uh, and plug those into the communication layer. So this interface here could be Modbus, uh, could be OPC UA, it could be LRDS. And um, then you have your, your device, which could be, in our case, um, maybe a, a Raman spectrometer or a, a fluorescent spectrometer. And this uh, element needs to talk um, via Modbus or OPC UA or LUTs with a communication layer. On top of the communication layer, we have the orchestration layer. The orchestration layer, those are the SCADA systems that control the production process. And they have a linkage to the enterprise IT um, and then also to an internal cloud, uh, mainly for quality control, but also for the, um, for the cloning uh, of production processes um, to go into other regions and also to compare results of the production over different regions. Uh, the difference uh, between here and here is that, you know, sometimes if there are older systems available uh, that are not able to talk OPC UA or any of the other interfaces, uh, there has to be a gateway controller. So a gateway controller is nothing else than um, 
a transcript functionality. So it, on this side, it speaks uh, OPC UA, for example. And on this side, it speaks the proprietary uh, um, 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 controller language uh, of the device. So one way to establish or to, to uh, enter the market is to have a system available here. Um, with the embedded chemometrics. Um, so uh, the sensor will analyze uh, the, the process parameters and then distributes those to the um, um, orchestration layer. Um, but I, what I also see is that maybe in the future companies will have their own share on the orchestration layer. Um, and for this here, I see two possibilities. In this case, it's called apps, applications. So one app could be um, an app that realizes different uh, modules that realizes, okay, there are some alarms, there are some um, 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 messages from the de devices and it could actually go into a reporting. And this could also include um, the, um, um, uh, the uh, reporting of um, changes in the, in the production um, uh, set up, for example. And then there's also, I would say, an advanced chemometrics uh, functionality available, not only taking into consideration the, the results from a specific spectrometer, but also uh, taking consideration uh, the results from different sensors along the production chain. And uh, last but not least, there are also two elements that I see in the cloud. Um, one uh, would be for uh, predictive maintenance. So, Ideally, the spectrometer would actually upload the data to the process app, and that would actually upload data to uh, the cloud. So as a company, there's a possibility to take a look at the spectrometers and see, oh, um, maybe the laser uh, needs to be replaced in a few weeks or months. Maybe we can actually already set up a call uh, with the customer or set up uh, a service um, uh, uh, for a specific uh, element here. So that's... Uh, very important. What you see down here is um, the area of digital twins, which is uh, today not part of my presentation, but um, this is also going to be an important topic in the future. And of course, for digital twins, um, AI uh, simulation, everybody needs data in order to train the, the models. And therefore, the cloud here could also enable uh, a company to get some data um, that are required for training any, any models. So this is, I think, uh, uh, for us, uh, an important um, um, architecture um, that we uh, are going now to follow closely in the industry and uh, take a look around and see um, to what extent this is actually implemented on customer sites and where we already see this. Other topic when we talk about uh, production processes is always the uh, same question, uh, vertically versus horizontally uh, oriented products. Uh, usually for development, uh, we have um, very dedicated uh, systems um, that are very precisely um, aligned to work for a very specific uh, environment. While with manufacturing and QA, uh, you should actually have a more broader uh, view on your product, um, making sure it's available for a set of different uh, purposes in order not to be too narrow for one application. And uh, there's actually one name that you see here, uh, which is called A-Team, which is our new uh, fluorescent spectrometer, which is actually, um, uh, the beauty is it's uh, um, available for development, um, uh, drug development, also for pharmaceutical, chemical, or biological uh, development, all the way to QA. So uh, we are able to do also the, the content uh, of uh, medicine using the, the A-Team, for example. And talking about process as critical, and if not more critical than, than the spectrometer itself, is the sampling, sampling options, uh, automation, uh, having the appropriate automation software to work uh, with the spectrometer, but also with the, with the sample preparation and the sample handling um, in, in, within the process, uh, talking about headline, online, and inline um, uh, analytical devices. 
the sampling needs to be different, especially if you have a very complex uh, sample handling uh, procedure. Um, this is this is key. Um, standard operation procedures and workflows, yes, very important. Um, this is important not only for the spectrometer to work properly, it's also very important if, as a customer, um, uh, there, there is a, uh, the task to go towards uh, digitalization and using digital twins in order to make the data consistent. Um, the operating procedures needs to be the same. Otherwise, if you train a model, you will get, uh, you will get errors, it will, will fail. Uh, and of course, so many more things as well. And uh, since we, we have to deal with this, um, for us as a company, there are uh, several ways to go forward to have answers to these questions. And one, uh, one answer is just to buy a company that already knows how to do this. And uh, we are very happy that we uh, were able to find the appropriate company. It's process instruments. Uh, they are um, uh, located uh, in the US in Salt Lake City. And um, uh, process instruments, they have a long heritage in the, um, uh, developing and also um, supplying uh, process Raman system. Uh, mainly in the petrochemistry uh, field, uh, which is uh, very, very time critical. So uh, uh, if there's uh, something wrong in the production process, it's usually minutes before uh, my colleagues from Process Instruments get notified that they are, need to adopt to uh, something, some changes in the, in the process. So they are, uh, for us, a very good source um, to get uh, to know more about the the uh, challenges of this uh, new market. Yeah, and then I, I wrote down, this is actually my last slide, and I wrote down uh, some of the things that, that I see that uh, um, uh, it's purely my, my, my personal uh, um, uh, opinion here. Um, it's, we, we always, and on a global scale, uh, I mean, every week we we are um, confronted, or we have a phone call or an email from from researchers in the pharmaceutical field, from universities, uh, from uh, PhD students, um, that they need uh, our system to do this, and this is so important, and we have to do it right now, and it's going to be a huge market for us if we just implement a specific function, and um, so what I what I say is it's it's relatively easy to get funding um, and to work towards a specific field, but the rest is hard work. So um, for us, it's always a question, okay, are we still in a, in a position where it's basic R&D via TRL of two and three, or is this already advanced and we can really consider that uh, this new product will, will uh, actually hit the market? Work backwards from your ultimate desired solution. Yeah, so that would be our approach that we would like to do. So we know what we want and then base grants on that. Um, not only understand the problem, but also the acceptable solution. One doctor is easy to convince, many are not. Also, I'm not sure if one doctor is easy to convince. I've seen also challenges here. Um, clinical trials are bloody expensive, yes. Uh, and of course, uh, also uh, we discussed this before, the um, the ten year uh, minimum um, proof of concept requirements uh, and the FDA regulations is also, of course, uh, could be a showstopper uh, when having a new system uh, on the market. And then, of course, we also have to be critical. Yeah, just because Raman is great and A team looks cool, doesn't mean it should be used. Yeah, if there's uh, an established uh, maybe even cheaper uh, option available. Maybe nobody is able to spend more money. Yeah? And of course, insurance, who will pay for this if we have uh, advanced technologies available? So that's also something that needs to be considered. And um, yeah, of course, there's also a lot of great work with spectroscopy in biomedical, but also there's some elements that are a little bit, um, I would say, uh, below the radar uh, out there. So that's that's all for me for today. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and I'm happy to answer your questions. <laughs>